As I waited for my virtual intelligence to select an appropriate target to become my new host, I perused what records we had been able to translate from our soon-to-be subjects. Mammalian. Omnivorous. Two arms. Two legs. No tail. And nothing all that remarkable in any physical category. Several orders of magnitude larger than me, although about average compared to everyone else in the galaxy. Trying to measure intelligence without any test subjects in hand was mostly guesswork, but as far as I could tell, they seemed to be pretty average in that regard as well. Their civilization was fragmented into hundreds of different governing bodies, which was a bit messier than most other planets at this stage of development. Not the worst I have seen, though. I couldn't just pick anyone as my new host. The link would give me direct access to the my host mind, but only temporarily. Two minds are not meant to become one, so the host mind always begins to degrade after a week. Maybe two, if you're lucky. Once the link is gone, you're on your own. Two weeks is nowhere near enough time to learn everything about your host. Social life, history, speech patterns, mannerisms, everything. It all had to be perfect or else I would be caught. The easiest way around was to find a host who wouldn't be missed and avoid interactions with anyone who would have known them previously. My computer beeped, flashing a notification across the bottom of the screen. My new host was on board. I felt a slight tingle in my head as my implants came online, eager to pair with the host. I could feel the connection trying to form, but until the host was prepared, there wouldn't be anything on the other end. A few hours later, the surgery was almost complete. My host had the implant chip attached to his brainstem, and he was awaiting my arrival. I inserted my body into the wound in the back of his neck before the autodoc sealed it, wrapped myself around the host's spine, and connected a wire beneath my implant to the host's, activating the link in the process. Switching to a new body was always disorienting at first, but I had the link to help me through. Whatever my host felt, I felt. Whatever my host thought, I thought. All I had to do was send my host a message over the link, and I would know his answer as surely as he did. It wasn't quite as instantaneous as my own thoughts would have been, but the delay was only barely perceptible. I could use my host's instincts and let his thoughts guide me, as long as I prompted him to do what I wanted. The Link's onboard translator could handle the language without any input from the host, once it had a few days' worth of exposure, and it could even communicate with the host's mind on its own to build the translation library while I focused on other aspects of the takeover. Of course, this wasn't a permanent solution. Once the host's mind started to degrade, his responses became less and less reliable. All I had to do was figure out how to use and take care of a completely alien body, learn the customs and social structure of an entirely new civilization, and then start living as one of them. All in just a week. Easy, right? A few minutes later, the anesthetics wore off enough to open the link. I was sitting alone at a small table with an empty chair across from me, in the middle of a dimly lit room. There were no walls in sight. Instead, the shadow seemed to envelop me in a dome of darkness. A few seconds later, my host appeared in the chair in front of me. I began to suppress his consciousness to make sure he would listen to my instructions, and the process would go as smoothly as possible. His image became translucent as he initially resisted, as all new hosts tend to do. Soon enough, he would realise it was futile. On cue, his image became solid again. He moved his mouth as if he was speaking, but no words came out. Me first, I said. I don't have all day. As I'm sure you figured out already, I now have full control over your body and mind. This has been done for the greater good of your civilization, and you have my word that your body will not be harmed in the process. But first, I have a few questions for you. Who are you? Who? He began, for I had to shut off his speech again. I am the one asking questions here. Who are you? I delivered a small electric shock through one of the host's implants as punishment for his disobedience. Ah, fuck you! I delivered another one, this time slightly more powerful. Alright, fine. My name's Dave. Dave Myers. I'm just an average guy. I dropped out of school a few years ago. I've been moving boxes and shit in a warehouse since then. You've got the wrong guy. What the hell could you want from me? No, your profile indicates that you're an ideal target. You see, Dave, if I pick someone important, people would know. Businessmen, politicians, celebrities. They don't just go missing for weeks at a time. But someone like you? I doubt anyone will notice. And even if they do, they won't care. Now, I'm going to need you to tell me everything about you and your society. After all, if I'm going to be you, I'll need to know how to do it. And remember, I'm in your mind. If you lie to me, I will know. And it will hurt. We spent the next several hours discussing the finer details of being a human, as they call themselves. There are so many details involved in becoming an entirely new species, it can barely even be understood by anyone who hasn't undergone the process before. Everything you take for granted about being yourself, 
Interacting with others, body language, social cues, eating, drinking, breathing, hygiene, even something as simple as muscle memory goes out the window. You get a week to relearn all of that from scratch with the help of your new host. Even with help from my VI and the link, it was never an easy task. Once I felt confident in my ability to pose as a human, my VI delivered to me the same location my host had been taken from. He directed me back to his apartment, which was just a short walk away. It was smaller than I was expecting, barely larger than the ship I'd arrived on. The walls were nearly bare, with a handful of posters being the only decoration present. Nothing I could see indicated any connections between my host and anyone else. I walked over to my host's computer and prompted him for the password. The delay over the link seemed a bit longer than usual, but he provided it to me and I was able to log in. Quickly closing out of the questionable things my host had been looking at before I arrived, I plugged in my universal computer and got to work. Based on technology borrowed from previous test subjects, the UC gave me a direct connection between my host computer and the one on my ship. With all the processing power of the galaxy's latest and greatest tech at my fingertips, I set about creating my host's new identity. The encryption used by the locals was rather impressive given their level of technology, but it had no chance of withstanding my attack. It was like trying to use a knife for self-defense against an orbital bombardment. After all, we have been building computers since before the humans mastered fire. The human security systems crumbled in no time. And by the end of the day, my host had his funding issues sorted out. Numerous bank transfers, none of them worth more than a few credits each, combined to funnel all the money I needed from the most valuable accounts I could find into my host's account. Satisfied that I was adequately prepared for my task, I took a quick break for some food before I began to come up with a plan. I would have to personally scout hundreds, potentially even thousands of locations, in order to provide my VI with enough data to select the most optimal targets. And once the targets were selected, the VI would feed the data to the second wave of scouts to get some more detailed maps and come up with an invasion plan. I could get most of what I needed just by posing as a tourist and wearing a hidden omnidirectional camera, but a planet was a large place by the standards of a pre-FTR civilization. If I didn't plan my trip carefully, I might not be able to visit every necessary location in time. That night, I dreamed I was meeting my host face to face over the link again, only this time I wasn't in his body like I'd been before. I was just me, many times smaller than he was. I tried to speak, but no words came out. My host smiled as if he knew what had just happened. The funny thing is, your link works both ways. I tried to shock him again, but nothing happened. Is something wrong? asked my host. I have been in advanced scout since before your kind understood farming. It's nothing I haven't encountered before. Nothing you can do can stop me. One year from now, Earth will be the latest subject of the Imperium. Like I said earlier, your link works both ways. I know when you're lying to me. Now who the hell are you? And oh, what do you want with my body? I tried to resist. I really did. But I suddenly found myself spouting everything I knew about the link, and I wasn't able to stop the words from coming out. I'm an advanced scout for the Draft Imperium. I need your body in order to blend with the locals while I study this planet and its people, in order to make the integration process as smooth as possible. I have one standard year, or approximately five of your months, to learn as much as I can and report back home. And once I'm done here, several dozen more scouts will arrive and start preparing for first contact. There was a small computer implanted in your brainstem and connected to a similar device implanted inside of me. Through these computers, I can read your thoughts and control your actions. When the connection is allowed to use its maximum amount of bandwidth, we perceive it as a face-to-face -face meeting, like what we're doing now. Luckily, I was able to regain some semblance of control before I accidentally revealed anything beyond that. My host didn't need to know the details of the integration process. And what happens to me when you're done? Your buddy will be unharmed. You're leaving something out. No, I... My host found the shock controls, and I felt nothing but pure pain for the longest three seconds of my life. Tell me, or I'll do it again. Harder. The link is temporary. Within the next few days, your mind will start to degrade. From there, you have maybe a week before you completely fade. In the end, nothing of the host survives. Once my mission is done, I will disconnect the link between us, leaving you physically unharmed but effectively brain dead. Good luck with that, asshole. I woke up, panting and dripping sweat, as if I'd just run a marathon. It was just a dream, I told myself. He couldn't have known how to activate the link. Can it even be done from his end? In the morning, I woke up feeling as if I had barely slept at all. I activated the link, prompting my host with some advice. He responded with directions to make a drink containing a popular stimulant. While I waited for the drink to finish brewing, I went back over to the computer. I tried to begin a bulk upload to transfer data from the internet back to my ship, but the computer was acting as if my ship wasn't there. I patted my fist on the desk in frustration, 
before going to get my stimulant. A few minutes later I was feeling slightly more awake. I tried the upload again and still couldn't get a connection. I looked down at the computer and realised that my UC was missing. Where the hell did I put that thing? I could have sworn I left it plugged in last night. You did. My host's voice was coming from everywhere around me. I activated the link and once again my host and I were seated opposite from each other at the table. He was sitting straight up, hands clasped in front of him, trying but failing to hide his smile. Where is the UC? No idea. Probably around here somewhere though. Why don't you go looking for it? I tried to shock him, but he somehow managed to reverse it and made me shot myself. Nice try. If you can tell me what's so important about that flash eye looking thing, I may have borrowed last night. I might let you have it. Fine. It's a universal computer. It connects any computer it's plugged into, into the one on my ship. I needed to send some data from your internet back home. And why do you need that data? My host image flickered. He was losing control of the link. None of your damn business. He tried to shot me again, but nothing happened. I could feel myself becoming stronger as the coffee continued to wake me up, and in just another few minutes I was able to retake control. Where is my UC? In your mum. I shocked him, both as punishment for his crude remarks and as proof to myself that I was once again in control. It's in the closet, in one of my old shoes. I walked over to the closet in question and opened the door. Which one? The one with the box on top of it. I bent over, Looking underneath the shelf and saw the one he was talking about. A shoebox was awkwardly shoved in between the top of a pair of boots and the bottom of the shelf. I grabbed the boots and reached inside, only to jump backwards as I felt a sharp pinch in the back of my hand. I looked at the back of my hand and saw that it was already turning red and starting to swell up. Once again I reached for the boot, this time turning it upside down and shaking it. An eight legged creature half the size of my own body, with a stinger that made up nearly half of its length, fell out and quickly scampered off into the back of the closet. What the hell was that? I asked my host. Fucking scorpions. Damn things love to hide just about anywhere that's warm and dark. They've got me a few times before sitting in places like that. It'll hurt for a little while, but it's not going to kill you or anything like that. When exactly were you planning on telling me about these things? How the hell was I supposed to know it was in there? Something didn't feel right to me about the whole situation. What were the odds of the first seen creature I encounter on this planet being right on top of the thing my host somehow managed to hide from me without my knowledge? The link assured me my host was being truthful. But that was one hell of a coincidence. Despite my host's assurances that the creature was harmless, I decided to swallow a nano pill just to be safe. With the UC now in hand, I went back into my host's bedroom and plugged it into the computer once again. Almost immediately, I realized that I had forgotten to save my configuration last night. Normally, this wouldn't have been an issue, but since my host had unplugged the UC, I would have to set up the connection to my ship all over again. Once that was up and running, I set it to search mode, giving my VI control to browse the human internet and locate the files it thought we might need. The search would probably take at least a few hours due to the sheer volume of data. The VI itself took up a lot of bandwidth, so the upload would have to wait until the search was finished. While I was waiting, my host suggested that I should go shopping since he had apparently been running low on a few food items before I took over. At this point I no longer trusted his motives, but he was at least being honest about that part. As I climbed into my host's car, I decided I would be in control, at least until we got to the store. If I went on autopilot now and let him drive us there, I would miss my best chance to learn how these vehicles operate. I sat in the driver's seat, key in hand, and took a brief look around the controls before I found somewhere that looked like a slot for the key. I inserted it and tried to turn it towards me. It wouldn't turn. It would go the other way, but all that accomplished was activating a few lights in front of me. What am I doing wrong? I asked my host. I'm not telling you shit. I want to see how long it takes you to figure it out on your own. I tried to activate a full connection of the link, which would have enabled me to shock him again, but he refused, meaning that we were stuck talking to each other like this. Seeing no other option, I just started pressing buttons. Five minutes later, I had only succeeded in lowering a window and turning on some music, when my host interrupted my struggles. Alright, this was funny at first, but now I'm getting bored. You see the pedal? All the way to your left? I looked down and tapped with my foot. Yeah, that one. Press it all the way down, hold it there, and try the key again. I did as he said, and the car roared to life. I'm going to start fucking with you for a bit. I don't want you wrecking my car. My host insisted that I had to perform some kind of balancing act with the pedals, or using a hand-operated lever next to my leg in order to control the vehicle's speed. It seemed excessively complicated to me, but any time I deviated even slightly from his instructions, something would go wrong. After I managed to create a traffic jam by accidentally shutting the vehicle off at a busy intersection, I caved in and started following my host's advice to the letter. Once we arrived at the store, I allowed my host to take over. He would have his pick of whatever he wanted to buy, 
and I was just going to memorise as much of it as possible, so I would be able to shop for myself, once my host's mind was too far gone to be of use to me. He ended up buying a handful of items from several different sections of the store, about a week's worth of food in total. On the way back home, I muted my host. I wanted to make sure I knew how to operate the vehicle without his input, and that I could navigate back to my new home by myself. Despite the fact that he was muted, he still managed to interrupt my trip just a few minutes later. Hey, let's stop at the drive-thru up here. My eyes followed his suggestion, settling on the sign indicating the entrance. I double-checked to see that he was muted, and according to the link he was. What for? Isn't this enough food for now? Well, yeah, but I haven't had takeout in a while since it gets kind of expensive. But you just gave me all that free money yesterday, didn't you? Yeah. So why the hell not spend a bit of it? Fine. To be honest, I didn't know how to deal with a host acting like this. Normally once the link is in place, the host couldn't do anything without my permission. But how harmful could a meal really be? I pulled in and let my host place his order. Once I was back home, I ate the meal my host had just ordered. It has some kind of plant-based outer shell with a rather messy mixture of meat, sauce and vegetables on the inside. The flavour was admittedly better than anything else I had eaten since I took over this body, so I can understand why my host had wanted it. Afterwards, he was strangely insistent that I eat these squishy, multicoloured candies he had just purchased at the store. And just like last time, I let him have his way, primarily to make him shut up for once. When I was done eating, I went back over to the computer to check my VI's progress. It still had about an hour to go before the upload would be ready, so I decided to start writing the first of my weekly reports to send back home. I barely finished the first paragraph when I began to feel a pain in my stomach. My host's instincts were telling me that I needed to be in the bathroom immediately. Assuming this was some kind of reaction to the sting I had received earlier, I checked the status of the nanopill I had taken earlier in the day. That creature's venom must have been incredibly potent to produce symptoms even after being hit with a full dose of nanites. To my surprise, the Autodoc program didn't report any toxins. As I sat on the toilet, thankful for the Link's ability to disconnect me from my host's pain receptors, I opened the connection once again. My host and I were seated at the same table we had been at before, and he could barely contain his smile. I know you did this to me. Of course I did, dumbass. Why? I don't have to feel your pain. You do. Yeah, this sucks, but good luck getting any work done like this. You don't even know- I know enough. If you really wanted to be friends with us, you would just show up and offer to trade, or give us a tour of the galaxy, or something nice like that. Instead, you're going to start mapping out the areas around a bunch of government buildings in like 40 different countries. To me, that looks like you're planning some kind of attack, and I'm not going to let you do that. He was right, of course, but he wasn't supposed to know any of that. The Link was supposed to have been blinding him, so he couldn't see anything I didn't want him to see. I tried to shock him, but unsurprisingly the controls once again weren't responding. You know, he said, I can tell when you do that. Suddenly, I reconnected to my host's pain receptors. This time, I wasn't able to disconnect. A few seconds later, I felt another shock. Forget my name already, huh? You're just going to steal my body and leave me to die without even knowing who I am? I couldn't really answer that. To me, a host wasn't really a person anymore. He was just a body for me to use during the course of my mission, an outfit that was as replaceable as any other uniform. I still knew his name, since I would need that for my mission, but that was all I really needed from him. When I finally crawled into bed that night, hours later than I had originally wanted to, I didn't even notice Dave locking out my senses right before I fell asleep. The next morning I sat down at the computer to write the report I was planning to write, before Dave had so rudely interrupted me yesterday afternoon. To my surprise, I had hundreds of new messages in my inbox on virtually everyone I knew. Friends, family, acquaintances, and even people I hadn't seen in years. And they were all saying their goodbyes. I quickly scrolled to the bottom of the list, seeing that the oldest one was the automated message confirming that my report was submitted, but I didn't- Oh shit! I activated the link, and you see Dave raising the middle finger on both of his hands towards me. The link's built-in translator informed me that humans consider this to be a very rude gesture. What the hell did you do? He smiled. I just saved the world. Thanks for the help, by the way. I would never help you. Oh? You don't remember? I wrote the report for you last night, and you told me exactly what I had to put in there to make you assholes fuck off. Thanks to you, Earth is now officially classified as a Category 7 Plague World. Dave ended the connection, leaving me alone as his image slowly faded out. I had to watch that stupid smile of his as I realised the implications of what he just told me. Category 7 Plague World. Officially, Earth would only be the fifth planet to receive that designation. Plague World referred to a planet with naturally occurring, highly transmittable and deadly diseases, 
with the potential to jump species and spread throughout the galaxy. Category 7 meant that it had several types of bacterial, viral and fungal infections that were each capable of causing a galaxy-wide pandemic with a death toll in the trillions. Official Imperium policy for dealing with these worlds was a complete quarantine enforced by any means necessary. Not even a single unmanned probe would be allowed in or out. So unless somebody else showed up and figured out that my report was wrong, I would be stuck here for the rest of my life. And given that there was now a strictly enforced death penalty for anyone who even attempted to enter the system, the chances of that happening were effectively zero. My only option was to write a second report explaining what had happened, and hope my superiors believed me. Not happening, Dave said, as soon as the thought crossed my mind. And given how the last few days had gone, I believed him. Suddenly, it was the middle of the afternoon. We are in Dave's car again, driving down a highway somewhere. I felt like I hadn't slept in days. Where are we going? Well, since you gave me all that money, I figured I'd spend some of it on a vacation. We're heading into the city to do some shit that I want to do. I tried to resume control of Dave's body, but I couldn't. None of the controls to the link were responding. All I could do was sit and watch, as Dave did whatever he wanted to do. A little while later, Dave got off the highway and parked his car. We boarded a relatively empty train, which gradually filled up with each passing stop. After a half an hour, we got off and walked into a rather large stadium. Based on the banners decorating the walls, I assume we were there for some kind of sporting event. We sat for a while, watching the competitors practice before the start of the match, as the other spectators slowly filled into the seats around us. Next thing I knew, we were near the end of the game, and the sun had long since gone down. I tried to talk to Dave, but he had muted me. Is this what it feels like to fade out? But that's supposed to happen to the host, not me. The next few days were a blur. Dave visited all kinds of museums, parks, monuments, and other tourist attractions. I'm pretty sure there was even a concert somewhere in there too. The whole time I was fading in and out of consciousness, as Dave's mind overpowered me through the link. Each day I spent less and less time awake, and when I was awake I felt more and more tired. I wasn't exactly sleeping, though. I was just, from my point of view, skipping forward in time. One second I was in one place, doing one thing, the next second, I was somewhere else, hours later, doing something completely different. I had absolutely no control over anything anymore. I couldn't even fully activate the link to talk to Dave, and he seemed perfectly happy to ignore my existence. The last blackout lasted nearly a full day. When I came to, I was back in the car, presumably heading back home. My vision was blurred so badly that I couldn't even read the gauges right in front of me, and the music Dave was listening to sounded as if it was coming from miles away. Welcome back. Dave said sarcastically. Did you have a good sleep? I tried to tell him to fuck off, as the human expression went, but even getting those words out was a struggle. It probably sounded more like... Fur, fur. The last thing I ever heard was Dave's voice. Don't fuck with humanity, asshole. <laughs>